in Roselle, New Jersey. And being so close to New York, there were always, of course, um, rising designers and all those that wanted to be models. I worked with um, two young rising designers uh, that were put on a fashion show every Mother's Day in Newark, New Jersey. And um, I was one of their models. One day he decided, um, and he asked me, uh, would you like to go or go to New York and um, speak with uh, Mrs. Eunice Johnson? She was interviewing models for the 1975-76 tour, Ebony Fashion Fair tour. And uh, she was in the New York office on 6th Avenue. I said, of course. So he made me an outfit. And back then they called it Beat My Face, <laughs> put makeup on. And uh, we walked into the Johnson Publishing building and she asked, would you like to go to Chicago? Of course. I was a senior in high school at that time. Had no idea um, what, what, what I was about to um, get involved in. They sent me a ticket. I flew to Chicago and auditioned with, um, along with 2,000 other applicants, male and female. And out of the 2,000, they were going to choose 13 models to go on tour. I flew to Chicago uh, for the first audition. Um, flew home and, of course, prepared for graduation from high school, not knowing that that would end up being my job out of high school. I uh, returned to Chicago for a second audition, and I was one of the 13 models that were chosen. As a matter of fact, I was the baby of the team. So I was rather protected, and everybody was like a mother and father to me. I, um, presently, I, I don't model now, but I modeled after Ebony Fashion Fair and after the tour. I modeled for another 16 years. I worked for Demetra Vidley in New York. And um, after moving to North Carolina, where I presently reside, I uh, worked with a modeling agency and trained models, sent a couple of girls to Paris, and um, got involved with some commercials in all the local area, then decided to go back to school. I had no idea what Ebony Fashion Fair was until walking into that office with Mrs. Eunice Johnson. I did re always read Ebony and Jet magazines, uh, taking my brothers to the barbershop or we going to the uh, hairdressers, or always in the community. There was always an Ebony and Jet around, even in our home. My parents would buy Ebony and Jet. But I had no idea of Ebony Fashion Fair and what it entailed and what it was all about. Um, was it my passion? My passion was to become a flight attendant because I wanted to travel. This was, of course, a great avenue for that to happen. I traveled in all the, all the states in the Union other than North and South Dakota because there aren't many African-American people in North and South Dakota, so there was never a show there. Um, but had no idea what Ebony Fashion Fair was. Uh, the height had to be at least 5'9". Of uh, certain size, you needed to be able to wear the high fashion designer clothes that Mrs. Johnson and Audrey Smaltz would go to Paris and uh, purchase the garments for the show. So you had to be at least 5'9". Very down-to-earth lady, very classy lady, and um, on a mission of exposing young people to fashion and the opportunity to travel to the country but a very laid back, beautiful woman. As a matter of fact, her dad delivered my husband. <laughs> Mrs. Johnson's father was a doctor in Selma, Alabama. Oh, he, an icon, oh my goodness. Um, very, very uh, shrewd businessman and um, very easy to talk with. And wanted to, as Mrs. Johnson, wanted to expose as many people as he could um, his power, of course, was the pen. That's how we learned about what was happening in the, in the world, in the country, with Ebony and Jet. Um, we weren't depicted on television back in the 50s and 60s like we are now, so the only way we got information about what was happening in other communities was via Ebony and Jet. I felt like I was a superstar. 
you couldn't help but because you're in a, a stadium or a theater with hundreds and hundreds of people and they're watching you walk a runway and we had skits, um, your name being called out, you had seconds to get behind the scenes and change into your next outfit. Uh, people wanting your autograph and uh, the media being there. So you, it made you feel like you were important, that you were in the limelight. However, it was very hard work backstage. You had to hit the runway on time. Um, your garments had to be on professionally. You had to walk the runway and present the garment as the designer wanted it presented. Um, and, well, we had a show every night, so we were in a different city every night, other than Sunday. We were in, the, in uh, that city for at least two, sometimes three days. But the major cities, or the smaller cities, we were in back-to-back. -back. We had a show every night, every of the week. I had the opportunity to, re to meet um, many, many celebrities. Uh, for example, um, Muhammad Ali. Uh, when we were in, in uh, California, of course, many of the actors and actresses were at the show and uh, would come backstage. So we had an opportunity to meet them, take photos with them. That was very interesting. Um, on one of the shows that we performed on the Mike Douglas show, Sherman Hemsley, uh, he was there. and. Um, I'm trying to think of, there were so many, some of the temptations. I had a chance to meet Melvin, and uh, well, of course, before he passed. Um, yeah, so many. Um, Jane Kennedy, uh, Silver Shepherd. Um, think of others. There were so many. It's been a long time. All the models in the show, we wore Fashion Fair cosmetics, and um, there were door prizes. Uh, they, of course, would auction, not auction off, but there were um, drawings, and many women would win a box or uh, of Fashion Fair cosmetics, but that was how Johnson um, promoted, Mrs. Johnson promoted uh, Fashion Fair cosmetics via the fashion show as well as, um, as you know, that Fashion Fair Cosmetics are only in major department stores. You couldn't buy it in like CVS or the small, the small stores where you can get some other cosmetics. Fashion Fair Cosmetics were only sold in major department stores. Yeah, yeah in some cities, for instance, in Mississippi, uh, we experienced, um, well, we were going to the show and getting prepared for the show, some racism, but we had a road management team that was on top of that. So they pretty much sheltered us away from that. And um, we stayed in the finest hotels all over the country. The only, like I said, Mississippi, we did experience uh, something backstage. I wasn't privy to it, but knew something had happened. But the uh, road manager, Willie Davis, he squashed it immediately. So the show went on. The show always went on on time. Um, other than that, I did not experience any. Uh, they treated us well. They treated us as if we were celebrities. And um, as I said, we stayed in some of the finest hotels and were, were, were served very well. It was, at that time, it was very revolutionary. The first show, first fashion show, Ebony Fashion Fair that hit the road, for instance, it had Pat Cleveland and some of the other, um, in the 60s, those models that were in Fashion Fair. 75 was in the first year for Ebony Fashion Fair. And Pat Cleveland became a very high couture model in Paris. Then you had Beverly Johnson, and all the other African-American models that were modeling then. Um, European designers were using models very heavily back in the early 70s. 
and um, they were, um, it showed that African American models were able to depict or to carry the designer garments better as equal or better than any of the Caucasian models, um, male and female. So um, by 75, yes, it was evident that fashion, we could carry fashion and that the designers were using us in magazines and during the um, seasonal shows, walking the runway in the couture. It exposed me to traveling. I, because of the age I was, of course, and my first time away from home, it opened up doors for me to be able to deal with people, communicate with people, and let them know things I needed, what I wanted. And it opened doors for me when I entered into um, the profession that I'm in now. I w I'm able to um, relate to people and have good conversation. And um, um, as a model, you're selling the garment by wearing the garment. And the profession I'm in now, I'm in sales. So it opened doors there. I wish you to email me that question so I can really give it some thought. Because it, 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 has, it, it has added so much to my life. It made me who I am today. Um, let me think about that one, Pam. Can I think about that one? And you'll send it to me in an email? I definitely will. Okay. I definitely will. Because right. that's, that's something, and I, I definitely want to, why I want to think about it, because it has, um, like I said, it made me who I am today. And, you know, when I went on tour, it was my first time away from home. The, the first chance, I mean, I was first time on an airplane and leaving Roselle, New Jersey. Um, and all the doors had opened for me. So, yeah, I need to think about that. <laughs> Sorry.